Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this video, we're going to prove this theorem that a monotonic sequence is bounded if and only if it's convergent. What does monotonic mean? Well, that means it's only increasing or decreasing. So let's prove this way first. Let's assume we have a monotonic sequence. I'm just going to call it a sub n. This is going to be my sequence. And I'm going to say it's monotone or monotonic. And for argument's sake here, to make it a little bit easier, let's assume that it's monotonically increasing. The argument would be more or less the same if we were decreasing. And we're going to assume it's bounded. Now, what does bounded mean? Well, that means there exists some capital B, I'll call it B, such that every element of A sub n is less than or equal to B. And this would be true for all n in the natural numbers. So that's what it means to be bounded. This is our assumption. We want to show it's convergent. Well, since it's bounded above, there must be a supremum. Let's let little a here. This is going to be the supremum of my sequence for all n in the naturals. And since there is such a supremum, after I let some epsilon, some arbitrary epsilon be greater than zero, there must exist some m in the natural numbers such that a sub m is less than a minus epsilon, right? If a is the supremum, epsilon is arbitrary, there should be some element here, some element of the sequence that I can, I can sneak in between them. That's sort of like one of the definitions of the supremum. That's what we get from being bounded. What about being monotonically increasing? Well, this is going to mean that every element of the sequence is greater than the last. So for all n, greater than m, we must have that a sub n is greater than or equal to a sub m, right? That's what it means for it to be increasing. Now let's write that definition of a convergent sequence. Letting epsilon greater than zero, there exists an element in the natural numbers such that for all elements after that m, the absolute value of our sequence minus its limit, which is going to end up being a, I want this to be less than epsilon. Well, one subtle trick here I'm gonna do, if I change the order of these in absolute value, that's not going to change anything because it's an absolute value, just negating it will be the same result. But A is the supremum of our sequence. No element from the sequence can be larger than it. So when we take this difference, it's going to be positive, isn't it? In other words, I don't need these absolute values if it's going to be positive. And from the fact that we are increasing a sub n greater than a sub m, that must mean that this has to be less than a minus a sub m, right? The inequality sign would go the other way if I'm subtracting them. And what's a minus a sub m? Well, take a look right here. If we just rearrange that by just adding epsilon and subtracting a sub m, we're exactly getting right here a minus a sub m being less than epsilon, which completes that part of the proof that this is a convergent sequence. Very nice. And if you want the other way to make it a full if and only if, that a convergent sequence is bounded, well, we just did that in the last video. You can check that out there. Now, I want you to click the video on the screen to watch the next video. I'll see you in that one.